Hey guys, welcome back. So today we continue work on these Hauserfeld generators. Uh, they were dropped off by a local subscriber, Chris, who was recently cleaning out a warehouse and came across these machines. They were destined for the trash. He didn't want to see that happen. So we brought them home. There were actually a total of four. So last week's video was spent getting these two up and running. We had to go through the fuel systems and repair the generator side of things. But these, they are done and dusted. But that leaves these two right here. You know, we haven't done anything with them. And I know for a fact, the one on the left needs a capacitor because we stole it to get one of those other machines working. So we'll get that installed. You know, I'm sure the fuel system needs a bit of work. And with any luck, we'll make quick work of it. And then we can move on to this final machine. This one is actually missing its carburetor. It was physically damaged. So we'll get that replaced, get the engine up and running, and hopefully get two more working machines out of this. So let me get set up a little bit better. We'll get this one up on the lift and go from there. got this end cap on here kind of loose and I will say this one is probably in the worst condition of the four there's just a lot of aluminum oxide a lot of oil a lot of dirt but hopefully it still works so we'll just get this unplugged maybe And get these zip ties out of the way. I have a brand new capacitor, so we'll get that secured and plugged in. And then we'll move on to the engine side. All right, so I'm going to use the same capacitor I used on the other machine. Just a brand new 25 microfarad. And that gets zip tied right there. And that's it for now. I'm gonna leave the control panel off until we know that this generator is good. So the next move here is to actually get the tank drained. Uh, thankfully, the fuel valve is turned off. So I would say there is a chance, although be it a slight one, that that carb might be capable of running the engine. So we'll get the line off right here, drain out what we can. And then I actually wanna drain the bowl as well. We'll feed it some fresh fuel and then we'll try to start it. All right, let's turn the fuel valve on. And there we go. The fuel that's coming out doesn't look that old, actually. So that is a good sign. And not a whole lot came out. You know, I don't see any water and it doesn't look that old. So yeah, that is a good sign. Uh, there is still a little bit in there. We'll deal with that later. You know, for now, I'm just going to cut off this line because it is fairly petrified. It should be replaced. 
once we know we have a good machine here. You can tell someone's been in here at some point because the drain is on the wrong side. It should be over here. And being where it is, I can't actually access that screw to drain out the bowl. So I'm going to crack the bolt on the bottom loose, try to rotate that bowl around, and then drain out whatever might be in there. Of course, it might just leak out, too, now that we have that bowl loose. All right, it's moving. And let's see if this cracks loose. On these Makunis, this bolt breaks off very easily, especially if it's corroded inside, but this is actually a very good sign. The bolt turns quite easily. The drain isn't clogged. And the fuel that's coming out doesn't look half bad. And there's a better look at the fuel that came out. No water, a little bit of debris. You know, some of that could have been in the cup to begin with. Although I wouldn't say the bowl was full. There should have been more fuel in there. So. Yeah, definitely give this one hope. So let's feed it some fuel, see if it accepts it. The carb is accepting fuel. And the line's there right now and rising, so yeah, looks like it's going to at least try to run. The needle and seat, they are working. The fuel is not dropping, so let's check the oil real quick, and then we'll try to start it. Definitely a dirty machine. And watch, this is the one that just works the dirtiest of the bunch, which it may very well. I mean, that might mean it was working and yeah, put to work more often than the others. Plenty of oil right to the full line. Although I think you're supposed to check it like that. And if we do it like that, it's slightly below full. The oil looks good. Should be fine to test with. And for this test, I'm just going to hook up a light and we'll tap in directly here to the stator into one of the legs. So these two spades are connected to a cord where on the other end, I can just plug in a light. All right, we've got a light plugged in and turned on. So that is ready to go. You know, everything else is looking good. Uh, one last good double check is to grab the governor arm and just make sure that throttle plate moves because when the engine's off, it's in full throttle. And when the engine starts, it's not until the governor builds up force where it tries to slow things down by closing that plate. And if that plate is frozen in the wide open throttle position, then yeah, you're gonna make quick work of a perfectly good engine. So we'll get the ignition turned on, the choke's already on. So let's give it a few pulls. Very nice. I'm impressed. The dirtiest machine of the bunch. And this one actually runs and makes power. Now, granted, I couldn't turn the choke off or it would go to stall. So the carb is dirty. 
it needs to be cleaned, but I would say we are most of the way there on this one. So let's get the carb off, we'll clean it up, and try this again. Just going to start by draining out what's left in the bowl. And once that's out, I'm actually going to spray off the carb body with some carb spray. It's pretty dirty on the outside, and I want to try to keep that out of the interior of the carb if possible. It's not too bad. Not sure what that is. Looks like a bit of corrosion. And yeah, the inside actually looks pretty clean. And of course, these pins, they're always tight. And yeah, actually, this one's damaged. So like the others, actually, this is the third of four that has a damaged leg. Now, this one is still somewhat working. You know, it wasn't flooding over, but what will happen is that this can kind of pivot out of place, and then the needle doesn't do its job. So I'm actually not going to try to save this one. I do have a clone, which is jetted very poorly, but if I move these jets over, the OEM ones, into the clone, it should run perfect. So yeah, let's just spend a second. We'll try to get these jets out. And we'll transfer them over. So that is the pilot jet. And it does look like there is some varnish. And it looks to be plugged. So that, I think, is the run issue with this carb. So we'll clean that up before moving it over to the clone. And this is the main jet right here. It's actually physically really small. and easy to break, but it looks like this one's coming out. Okay, good. So I'm gonna set this one aside. We'll get this one opened up and uh, we'll move the jets over once they're cleaned. If it was plugged, it was just barely. So that is clear. The main jet we know is clear, although I do see buildup on it, a varnish. So I'm just going to spray through these with some carb cleaner. That'll get that varnish off, and we should be good at that point to move them over. I'm going to drill out this pilot jet just a bit. You know, the stock size is a number 79 drill bit. I verified that. That is what this is. But the Makuni pilot jet, it's very lean, even on a new carb. So I think going up one size should alleviate that. 
Uh, the main jet seemed pretty good. That one came in at a 66, which seems correct. So we'll just do this for a minute until we're through. And then we can install the jets. And I will say, you shouldn't do this unless you have an extra jet. These drill bits love to break off, especially in the Makuni pilot jets. And I don't actually have another. So if I break this bit, that is going to be a problem. I think we're through. Still a tight fit, so I'm going to keep working at it until I can just pull the drill bit out. Right now I have to unscrew it to get the bit out. Okay, we're good. So if you watched last week's video, you'll know that this carburetor is actually a well-built carburetor. They just got the jetting wrong. The pilot jet, it's about nine micro drill bits too large, and the main jet is about three too small. So thankfully, they matched the thread pitch and type so that these can just be moved over. So let's get a 10 millimeter. We'll get that bolt off and start with the main jet. In a lot of carburetors, you can't do this. The clones, although they look similar, once you get into it, there are differences usually. Like this one, for example, has the main jet down the center, whereas the Makuni had it on the side. Uh, but thankfully, that jet that's in there, it is compatible. And the nice thing about the clone, too, is that this pin is nice and loose. For some reason, the Makuni pin, it's very tight. And I've broken these little arms off before. And clearly, uh, someone has had issue with these as well, since only one of the four generators had a good carb, meaning these arms weren't broken. And this pilot jet has an O-ring, so I'm going to move that over. Uh, the OEM does not have that. But it's not going to hurt. If anything, it's going to help seal. You know, this would be a vacuum leak if air were to come in around the threads. That should do it. Let's try it out. Before we get that car back on, we have good access to get this blower housing cleaned up. So we'll do that real quick before getting that carb on. So theoretically, this should run the engine pretty well. But we're not out of the woods yet. The clone carb I used last week did have another issue besides the jetting. And that was the actual choke plate is a little bit larger. And what happens is when you put the plate on that operates the choke, it interferes with this plate. So you really have to fiddle around 
and get things to line up perfectly or else the choke will not operate. So let's get the plate on. See if we can't get the choke to work. Yes, yeah, so you can see right now the choke is not wanting to rotate. So let me tighten these bolts down a little bit more. We'll add the front of the air box, or I should say the back of the air box. We'll just loosely snug things up and you can see we do have some adjustment between these parts. So if we can find the exact right spot, things should work. So right now everything's snugged up and the choke almost works actually. It is kind of hanging up a bit. So I will back off this a little bit. And let me see if I can adjust the position of the carb to make it better. Yeah, it's not too bad right there. We've got a good pre-filter as well as a filter. Actually, all the filters on these machines are in pretty good shape. All right, let's give this another try. We'll get the ignition on, the choke on, and I've already fueled it up. It's right to there and the needle is holding. So let's give it a few pulls and hopefully we can turn that choke off. shouldn't have drilled that jet out. It is running way too rich. So I'm going to pull the pilot jet from that other carb and that should get us up and running here. Of course, we are going to have issues now with that last generator getting it to run right. Unfortunately, going back to the OEM pilot jet made no difference. I pulled the airbox just to make sure the air filters weren't causing a restriction, which would also cause a rich condition, and neither change made a difference. It is running extremely rich. So I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to pull this carb off, just look it over closely, 
and I'll let you know what I find. Well, this one, it's been a bit of a struggle. I ended up pulling off the clone carburetor and I had another clone right here. So I put the OEM jetting in it, installed it, started the engine and there was absolutely no difference. It was running rich. So this one had me a little stumped, especially since last week I put a clone on that machine and it runs perfect. And then it occurred to me, the only jet I swapped out was the pilot jet. I actually left the main jet in there. And that clone main jet is actually a little bit smaller than the OEM main jet. So I ended up putting the non-drilled pilot in here with the clone main jet. And I think that solved the issue. Let me show you. That is quite a bit better. It's still a touch rich, but at this point, there's really not much more I can do. You know, ideally, I'd put an OEM carb in here. And unfortunately, those are discontinued and not available. So like this, it's running pretty well. Certainly better than that clone would have run out of the box. So at this point, you know, I say we move on. Let's get the oil changed while the engine's hot and finish this thing up. Yeah, pretty much perfect. Maybe a touch over full, but that should be fine. Well, I seem to be making extra work for myself. I went to put the bolt in for the ground wire and it just broke right off. So, you know, I could drill that and tap it, but we do have another down here. So I'm going to tap that and hopefully that works out. You know, otherwise plan B would be to drill out that original spot. So we got the ground wire nice and secure. I'm going to pull off this inspection cap because I want to make sure this wire stays clear of this rotor bolt. Since that is spinning, it'll wear the wire away if it's touching. And I also want to be very conscious of where these wires go. I don't want any of them near the rotor or they're going to get torn up. Now, most of the wires, they are secured already with a zip tie, the exception being this one and the ground wire. So... I'm going to, like I did on the other one, add a zip tie just through the vent right here to kind of help this set of wires, which are the main outputs, to kind of stay out of the way of the rotor. So we'll just kind of tuck it in like that and put the zip tie right there.
It's hard to show you, but there are no wires up against that rotor bolt. So we should be fine. And I also took a look down on the vents just to see that we had nothing in where the rotor spins. So we are good as far as the power end goes. You know, at this point, I think we are going to have to deal with this mess. You know, I'm not sure how good I'm going to be able to get it, but I can certainly make it look a lot better than it is right now. Gotta say, this is one of the dirtier machines I've cleaned up in quite a while. You know, it's not all rusted out. It was just covered in a lot of dust, dirt, and oil really sticking it on. So at this point, it is mostly clean. You know, I did just remove these bolts holding the tank on because I want to fully drain the tank. And I also want to replace the tank bushing. You know, it's not leaking yet, but it is fairly petrified. So I want to get that replaced now. Then we can reattach the tank and move on to the other machine. Oh yeah, I can see it's cracked already right there. So that came out way too easily. You know, plastic tanks are good because they don't rust, but you gotta pay attention to the bushing because they do fail and depending upon how you store the machine kind of determines how long they last. Uh, but like this one, it wasn't leaking, but you saw how easily that came out and it was already pretty badly cracked right down here. So yeah, you really don't want five gallons of fuel pouring out on top of the engine. So this is something to pay attention to if you have a plastic tank. There we go. I should have finished draining the tank when I had that bushing out, but not a big deal. There's really not a lot in there. So I can just mop up what's left and that'll also clean up the bottom of the tank. 
I'd say this one is pretty much done. Really the only thing left to do besides testing it is put on the new fuel line. You know, that said, I'm gonna leave it off for now because I wanna test with the test tank. So let's get this one off the lift and bring up the final one, see if we can't get that one to run. So I'm gonna start just by getting this control panel back on. In the first video, I took this off looking for a capacitor for one of the other generators. And what I found is that this one is a brushed generator. So although it does have a capacitor, this is not the right type. You know, instead this is polarity sensitive and we actually have a bridge rectifier kind of around the corner. So, you know, visually everything looks really good in here. So I don't suspect we have an issue. So we'll get this reinstalled and then turn our attention to the engine. This is kind of a neat little feature. Wasn't sure at first what to make of it. And I believe it's to help things stay dry here when it's raining. And to be honest, they, they probably should have done it more like that. That would have been a really good idea. You know, like this, not sure it's doing a whole lot, but I'll put it back. You know, it does have the model number right there. So that is important information for somebody to have. Well, someone's definitely been into this machine before me. This is how I received it. Uh, thankfully, I did also get a box of parts with it, which includes the air box and the OEM carburetor, which is in fairly good condition. I mean, it's dirty. We have a plugged main jet, but like most of the others, there's also a broken arm right there. So unfortunately, we can't use this. We're going to have to use a clone. And the only pilot jet I have left is the one I drilled out. So this one may not run so well but I guess we'll find out. Anyway, I wanna get this plate reattached. This plate is what controls 
the tension on the governor spring and it doesn't need to be removed. You know, to install the carb or uninstall it, you only need to remove this plate. So I'm gonna get that plate off now. We'll reinstall this governor bracket for the governor spring and then we'll get the clone on and try it out. Kind of a tight space here under the exhaust. So this bracket, it's really not needed for this application. This actually allows you to adjust the governor spring tension. So you can slow the engine down or speed it up. You know, on a generator, usually you don't want to change the speed. So what I often do is back out these set screws and then I can move this lever to where we get to 61 and a half hertz. And you can see these set screws aren't quite set right because I can move it, although the mechanism is quite stiff. But if I back these screws off, then I can fully adjust it from idle all the way up to over revving the engine. So once I get the speed dialed in, you just drive these screws in to kind of lock things in place. One sets the minimum idle speed and the other one the maximum high speed. And when you lock them in, it just makes the lever so you cannot move it in either direction. Anyway, we'll leave this loose for now. There's only one bolt holding it to the engine. And the way it kind of gets its orientation or gets locked in is by that choke plate that gets bolted down to the carburetor. So once the choke plate is back on and things are snugged up, we can snug that up. And this should be good at that point. So like the other machines, we're gonna swap out this paper thin gasket for the clone carb gasket. It is thicker. So in theory, it should work better. So I've got the OEM pilot jet in there. This is the one I drilled out. So that could be an issue. And if it is, although the OEM carb is discontinued, the OEM jets are not. So I can order the correct OEM jet that has not been drilled out. So this adjustment too, this is a fine adjustment for the pilot circuit. And on all these clone carbs, I've been setting this all the way clockwise to make it run as lean as possible since these are natively running a bit rich. So let's get the linkage on and see if the jetting on this carb is gonna work out. Just gonna snug these bolts up temporarily. This gets everything oriented correctly up above. Then we can tighten down those three bolts to lock it in place. And then we can finish it up by getting the air box installed and that plastic panel that runs across the top.
Well, I think we're at the point where we can try starting this. So let's just check the oil real quick. Plenty of oil. It actually looks fairly clean and right to the full mark. So let's add a little bit of fuel, pull the cord, see what we get. Okay, we are full. Needle seems to be holding. So let's try it out. All right, let's try this out. Ignition on, choke on. We've got a light plugged in and turned on. And this throttle, it's not completely locked in the right position. So for now, I'm keeping it to the left, which should be the faster speed. You know, I'm sure we'll have to double check this later when we get it outside. But as long as it's close, you know, we should be fine for testing. So let's see if it runs. Well, the good news is the engine sounds good and we're making power. The bad news, that clone carb is running the engine too rich. And I'm sure I'm to blame for this one. I should not have drilled out that pilot jet. So I am going to order up a new OEM pilot jet and we'll give that a try. You know, for now, we'll get the oil changed and finish cleaning this thing up. Yeah, pretty much perfect, right to the full line. Instead of just getting a jet, I actually found a used carburetor on eBay. Now, a jet would have cost $15 plus another $15 shipping, so we were talking about $30 for just that one little part. You know, this carb, although it was advertised as likely needing a light rebuild, only cost $60. It's an OEM Makuni, and we have the jet we need. So my hope is that we can actually just clean this up and use this rather than the clone. Uh, worst case, you know, we can always fall back to the clone. But I think in the long term, the engine will be in much better shape with this carburetor on it. Anyways, you can see there is rust, you know, from the pictures I could tell the bowl wasn't in great shape, uh, but definitely fixable. But we do have a bunch of extra bowls, so I'm not too worried about that. You know, I think for now, let's just get this fully apart. We'll take kind of the best parts from this carb and the others I have. You know, we'll clean this one up, put it together, and try it out. So let's see if we can get this pin out without instantly breaking it. go. Needle looks decent. Main jet, I think it's clear. Although pretty green. And it's pretty tight in there too. I don't think it's been removed 
in a while. Okay, we'll check where this needle is set at. There's no saying it's set right currently, but let's see. It's at half one, one and a quarter. Yeah, a bunch of corrosion on there too. So, you know, I could clean some of these things up, but again, I do have a lot of parts for this carb. So I'm gonna use a different bowl, a different bowl nut, most likely a different needle and float, probably a different pilot jet. You know, we'll obviously reuse these jets and of course the carb body, which is the most important part. So I'm just gonna go through all these ports, make sure nothing is clogged, make sure these are clear and we'll soak this in the ultrasonic and put it back together. Oh, I almost forgot. We do have an emulsion tube that is removable. And it's really stuck. Let's put a little PB blaster in there. Nope, it's not moving. So I'll let it soak in the ultrasonic before trying that again. Pilot jet's not clogged. And neither's the main jet. I'm just gonna double check these with the micro drill bit set. I believe this one should be a 79 and this one a 66. Seventy nine fits. And a seventy eight does not fit. So that's good. That's exactly the size we needed. Now as far as the main jet goes. Pretty sure it was a 66 on the other OEM carbs. I could be wrong, because that feels pretty loose. Let's try 65. 64. Yeah, so this one's a 64. So I think that's a little bit larger. Let me grab one of the other OEM main jets and compare it real quick. All right, let's have a look at this one. Yeah, the bowl is a little bit better than that one. As far as the main jet goes, this one is much cleaner, but I'm fairly confident it's smaller. So likely I'll stick with the jetting that came on the carb as is. So yeah, that is a 66. And 65 does not fit. So yeah, jetting is a little different. And the carbs are a little different too. You know, according to the parts diagram, this is the correct carb for the machine, where it has this fuel input bent down. Whereas these carbs, it's coming straight out. And now that it's here, I can see it's actually a bigger problem because this is for quarter inch line, and this is 316. So we're gonna have to adapt the line from the tank, which is quarter inch, to fit this fitting. Anyway, let's clean this up and try it out.
It took unnecessary force, but it did finally break free. The emulsion tube, that is. So I'm guessing it's not in very good shape, because it was really stuck in there. Yeah, it is not in great shape. Those holes look to be clogged. There's a bunch of corrosion on there. So let's just clean this up. We'll soak it in the ultrasonic. It cleaned up really well, both inside and out. So hopefully it runs as good as it looks. Anyway, all the jetting came from this carb that I purchased off of eBay. You know, everything over here actually just came from the parts carbs. I took kind of the best of the best, hoping to make one halfway decent one. So we'll start just by getting the emulsion tube back on. I might tap that in just a little bit. Yeah, that should be fine. As long as the bowl can go on, you know, the bowl actually kind of centers that pin and keeps it from falling out. So lastly, we just have the main jet and then we can put the bowl on. And I'm actually thinking I might use the pilot jet that I drilled out, at least to start with, because these OEM carbs, they do run quite lean. And I'm thinking if I can get away with running the drilled out jet, then I can use the original non-drilled out one on the clone on a future project. You know, otherwise that clone's going to be pretty useless. So we'll just turn this in until it lightly seats, which is right there. Then we'll turn it out half one, one and a quarter. And the pilot, it's actually still on the machine, the one I want to use. So let's get that clone carb off. We'll transfer the jet over and see if this is any good.
So this is fairly low risk because this jet, this drilled out one, which is a no, now a number 78, can be changed back to the non-drilled out one without actually removing this from the machine. So yeah, hopefully this one will work. I almost did it again. Good. Looks like the needle and seed are working. Let's try it out. All right, let's give this a try. It's amazing the difference an OEM carburetor makes. Uh, this time it sounded perfect. That engine was rock solid steady. And that actually is kind of surprising because the overall jetting in this carb, it is jetted richer than it was in this clone carburetor. You know, we're running the exact same pilot jet in here. And the main jet we found was actually two sizes over, whereas the clone main jet was actually two sizes under yet the OEM runs perfect. So yeah, I think we're out of the woods on this one. So let's get the rest of the airbox back on. We'll get these machines outside and put them to the test. All right, let's give this thing a try. Have the external tank plumbed into the clone carburetor with the OEM jet. Now, this model, it is the exact same one as the two we tested last week. And if you remember back, those tested very well. Under a full load of 5,000 watts, the THD only came up to 5.5%. So I'm expecting the same of this one. So let's get it started. We will double check the outputs and then we will bring the load up to the max and see how it does. Oh. 
All right, so far so good. The no load voltage is 258 volts. The THD without a load, 3.8%. And the Hertz, a little fast, 63.6. So let me slow that down a bit and then we'll check back. Let's try this out. The engine speed is a lot better now that we've made that adjustment. We're starting out at 3.8% THD. Sine wave looks decent. So let's put on a load, 2,500 watts. Did stumble a little bit. So we're now at 2,500 watts. THD is at 4.5%, so that is good. The Hertz, right at 60. So that is very good. At 121.3 volts, the sine wave looks good. Okay, let's bring it up to the max now. So we'll swap out the 5 for 2,000. So now we're at 4,000 watts. Uh, the engine's definitely struggling a bit. Let's try 4,500, 5,000. So we're at the rated load. Engine speed, it's a little unstable, but it's holding. We're at 57.8 hertz, 111.8 volts. And the THD, same as the other machines, at 5.3, 5.4, so it's actually a little bit better. The sine wave looks decent. Not too bad, although not as good as the other two. You know, that said, it did pass the tests. You know, I guess the thing I was most concerned about was that when it went under load, you know, the engine speed would dip quite a bit. And even under a full load, the engine speed was a little bit slower than the other machines and the speed was fluctuating. So it wasn't running quite as nicely as the two we fixed last week. You know, that said, it is still passable. You know, it was above 57 hertz under a full load. Uh, the THD maxed out at about 5.3, 5.4%. And the voltage, it did drop under load, but that is typical on something like this. There is no AVR. So this one, I would say, is a pass. So let's get everything unplugged. We'll drag it out of the way, and we'll connect the final one over here. Now, this one has the same frame, same engine but a different generator head. That one is brushed. So I'm really curious to see how that one performs, especially on the THD front, compared to the others, which are brushless. So let's get it hooked up and try it out. So we are plumbed in, feeding fuel into this OEM carburetor that I got off of eBay. It has the drilled out pilot, and the main jet is actually two sizes larger 
than the OEM carb is supposed to have. So it'll be interesting to see how this one runs the engine compared to the clone carb we just tested. Anyway, everything's plugged in. So once we're started, we can double check the outputs and apply a load. Now this time I'm only gonna use the amp probe to measure the THD. Uh, the button that switches between voltage and Hertz, it's sometimes not working. So I'm not sure if it's due to the cold being that it's about negative seven Celsius or 19 Fahrenheit. But whatever the reason, we'll just leave that alone, check the THD and we'll use the kilowatt to check the voltage and the Hertz. And of course the oscilloscope to see what that waveform looks like. So let's get it started and see how this one does. Yeah, already I can see we're performing worse. We're starting off at close to 7% THD with no load, so it's only going to go higher uh, with the load. You know, we're now at 62 hertz. I think it was about 133 volts. And the sine wave actually doesn't look quite as clean as the brushless generator did. Anyway, let's see how it does under a half load of 2,500 watts. Seems to be holding fine. Uh, THD came up to 11.5%. Uh, voltage is now 124 volts, 60.3 hertz, so that is good. The sine wave actually cleaned up a little. So yeah, not too bad. And let's bring it up to the max of 5,000 watts. So we'll take the 500 off, swap it for a 2,000. So we're at 4,000 watts, 4,500, 5,000. It's performing very similar to the other engine. Though the engine speed's a little bit better. At 58.9 hertz, 117.4 volts. And the THD surprisingly isn't terrible. It's at 17.5%, and although that's high, it's actually lower than most generators you would buy today. And the sine wave, yeah, not too bad. We'll just take the load off, give the load bank a second to cool down, as well as the engine. Then we can shut things down. All right, no issues to report. This one did very well. 
uh, the engine held a little bit better under full load at close to 59 hertz. Anyway, you know, in total, there were four of these that were in a warehouse and they were destined for the trash. You know, someone clearly was trying to fix them because one of the machines had the wrong capacitor, another one was missing it altogether, and three of the four carburetors were physically damaged by someone. And in the end, these didn't need a whole lot to get up and running again. We are four for four, and I'm glad I saved these because these are very nice machines. You know, I especially like these nine horse vanguards, and we also have three brushless generators that are among some of the cleanest traditional generators I have tested, maxing out at about 5.5% THD. So yeah, well worth saving. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.